you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, a painting failed. But to me, it's, it was like, how do you overcome this sense of failure and actually just build it into your process? So if something in a way fails, you just, well, well it's not finished yet. I think I just skipped over something I'd like to go back to, and that is just that we've already launched into portraiture, which is a huge part of your work and abstraction we will discuss later as well but in the early days you did have a couple of shows of still lives and that's where you really started off when you're exhibiting um can you tell me a bit about that I did no I did have um 2004 2006 were very self-portrait and photorealist um 2009 started to loosen up with the opera room and then 2010 I did and 11 and 12, I did shows that were interior spaces. And once you start looking at space, when take the figure out, you start to get skills and understanding of space, whether you flatten areas, um, it starts to go into abstraction. Then I did three shows of Still Life a series. And, and look, they each had a conceptual framework that's going to take too long to go into. But there was aspects where I didn't always control what the objects were in the Still Life. And so then I was really pushed to work out how do I make a painting successful in what I would deem successful with these elements that I haven't controlled. And I started to look a lot more, not just at what was in front of me, but a lot more at painting references, like, for, you know, techniques. So I'd look directly at paintings that I liked, um, cubism, purism, and really borrow techniques, colours, forms, and develop a sort of language that moved beyond realism and looking at just purely what's in front of you and observation. And, and I think then from there that started to come into the portraits. I started to build up this a sort of confidence with form and shape and colour and stylization. And then that kind of was like this launch pad and then you kind of look at the portrait I did of Gillian Triggs and it's got all those aspects, all those elements in it, including a still life element. I guess where it's kind of important to note is that it didn't, it wasn't a quick launch into abstraction. It's, this is like years of experimenting and doing things and not every show was like commercially successful. But I also think that it was important that I just did it um, and develop and gave myself that time to develop without sort of being too worried about, well, of course you want to cover your costs, but it doesn't always happen. And, of course, you have painted a lot of um, notable people as well, which have been hung in the Archibald. But it was a self-portrait that was going to win you the Archibald and it was a self-portrait after George Lambert. And you were actually the te- only the tenth woman to win the prize in its hundred, well, almost a hundred year history at that point. And you know, a lot of my listeners and I'm always interested in hearing about how it felt on that day when you actually won. What was your experience like winning, even though you'd been a finalist several times before? Well, to mentally prepare, I always look at really how can I value the experience. Of not winning and <laughs> you know <laughs> you go there and the opportunity to even just be selected as a finalist and then you go as a finalist and then you have a lunch the, with the subjects and the artists the day before the announcement and you really want to prime yourself to really make the most of the experience and the opportunities just to talk and make friends or acquaintances with other artists who gather from all over Australia so I went with yeah. that mindset yeah, yeah sure and I was, it's just this kind of crazy moment of like you were really hearing Michael Brand's voice over the phone as soon as like (laughs) I turned it on, it rang. And just that kind of moment of something had crystallised that perhaps you had dreamt about since you were 15. (laughs) I just want to talk a little bit about the self-portrait as well because um, you've done so many fabulous works in this genre. In particular, one of the ones that I really enjoyed seeing and it became quite um, well known was your nude self-portrait after Raphael in 2016. I remember first seeing it in the Portuguese and then it ended up in the Know My Name exhibition in the NGA and they were using it a lot, you know, to advertise that show. So, you know, I think a lot of people have seen that. It was a very beautiful work. Can you tell me a little bit about your approach with self-portraits and sort of how 
how it works in the studio and, you know, how you come up with your ideas and, and, and inspirations in that regard? So because I started really young working with self-portraits and it was before selfie culture, you know, I was of the generation that still thought that if you uh, were doing, if you sort of drew that much attention to yourself, you must be narcissistic. Um, We are in a culture now that is breeding narcissistic character, you know, traits. But at the time I was working in it, I was really thinking about art history and as well the media and, you know, how as a young woman, because I did my first self-portrait when I was 17, so I was still at school. Yeah. And you're still trying to find who you are as a person and how do you operate in the world and what are your options? What should you adopt? And there is this sense in our cult, in our contemporary culture still that, you know, you've got some choices like of how you construct your own persona and what agency that gives you. But I think women in the art world knew centuries ago that the way they positioned themselves within their painting practice would give them a certain level of agency within the male-dominated art world. So that you've got that historical reference, but then you've got this saturated media environment where women's images are used to trade all kinds of commodities Um, and then you've got the history of art and you know the development in western art history of modernism and the use of the female form through that development and so really the the sort of men have been trading on women's image images in their kind of explorations of modernism cubism you know um abstract expressionism all these kind of ways and so as a young woman how do you then find a language that you can inhabit as a form that feels like you are finding your own way of being in the world that is your own that feels embodied as an image even though it's a two-dimensional thing it's pretty fraught And I suppose as you change and you're always find, you know, you're always shifting as a person, um, how you view yourself, how you think other people view you, how can you find a new sense of yourself and also just how do you, how do you utilise yourself as a model? When you are a portrait painter and you don't always have the money to pay for a model to be there every day, all day. Well, and exactly. Some, oh, that's a big part all of it, I Sometimes, think. yeah. No, that is totally true because you can start a painting whenever you want and you don't have to worry about all that side of it. Um, and you also yeah. don't worry about pleasing anybody and yes. or tapping into what they think or anything like that. Yes, or exploiting a model in any way, you know, trading on somebody else's image. But I also was mindful not that I didn't want to exploit my own image um and you know I don't know how you define what that is I think everyone has to do that for themselves and I suppose that's where social media um also poses these questions to every single person that's online but I suppose with the that's why I did avoid doing any nude images of myself but this was so kind of veiled in a slightly cubist form that it didn't feel that it felt nude rather than naked. It didn't feel too exposed. Well, it's interesting also when you were comparing it to social media, but in a way what what you're doing um, has got nothing to do with the photograph that you see on social media. No, 100%. And the process of that, of the way I make them, is so the complete opposite of a quick selfie. It's really about sitting in a process of painting while you're working as the model and the painter and being so patient with that process but also with how over a period of time you're going to feel so different day to day today and that's going to because you keep searching for how do you find a visual that communicates that energy that you're experiencing whether it's an emotional energy or a psychological space that you're in a mood you're always wanting to align the visual with that and I think that um once you've done that ongoing and had that process it really also sets you up to be able to be an abstract painter because that is 
100% what you were doing is trying to align the visual with the energy. 